Greetings, and welcome to episode 19. In today's episode, we'll be discussing the middle path and what that means for your journey. We'll also be discussing how the middle path is discussed in most religions, and also what I've learned that means for my journey. So now, if you're ready, sit back, relax, and enjoy. So, the middle path. What does that mean for your journey? It means an end to duality, an end to polarity. It means walking a path of balance. Not finding balance, but becoming balance yourself. People think that you need to figure it out to find the next step. And what I've learned is that you just go to the next step and then figure it out. That is the best way to go. Because if you keep looking for the next step, you're never going to find it. And you're just going to become disappointed. So just go to the next step and then figure it out. Become balance. Become non-duality. Become non-polarity. When you look at your life, we'll start small. We don't need to think about the entire cosmos right this second. Let's think small. Let's think about you, your path, your life, everything that's involved in your particular reality, your particular point of view. Deep breath. Look around. I want you to first think in terms of good and evil. That is our basic polarity, our basic duality, good and evil. <coughs> Both good and evil do not exist. And they are based solely on the perception of the person experiencing whatever is going on. And good and evil is based on pleasant and unpleasant. Everything we deem as pleasant is good. Everything we deem as unpleasant is evil. Life just doesn't work that way. We all know there are gray areas. What if there aren't gray areas? What if there's just one area? And several different ways a situation can occur. But the more favorable it is to you and the people involved, it's a good situation. The less favorable it is to the people involved, it's a bad or, or evil situation. Or maybe it's just a situation, and your reaction to it is what is good or what is bad. That can fit along the lines of anything. Now, thinking it in that way has a risk of making you seem emotionally detached. And it does. It will. But bear in mind that there's extremes in everything. I'm my one of my goals in achieving balance and maintaining it is to not lose that sense that I care, that sense of empathy and compassion. But now we've broken down your base duality, good versus evil. It just means pleasant versus unpleasant. dark versus light, you could call it whatever you like, but we're going to stick with good versus evil. Because it's basic and it fits along the lines of almost every religion to date. Calling it the middle path even speaks directly to Christianity. Most of the other enlightened paths call it non-duality. Christianity was the only one that specifically referred to it as the middle path. It didn't really expand on it, and from what I gather, from what I remember of the Bible, it's only even mentioned a few times, if even more than once. Seek the middle path, Jesus said. 
And yeah, I don't even think it's mentioned again. But it gets honorable mention at least. And I'm going to deal with that particular statement because the majority of the people have a Christian background. Regardless of who you are now, most of us came from a Christian background. And so I'm trying to add vali validity to your previous but current incarnation. The you you were before you are you now. If that makes any sense. Because none of us are who we were a year ago, two years ago, three years ago. So the person you were back then who thought all of that information was invalid. From where you're sitting now and what you know about myths and legends... Take another look at that book and see if you don't see it differently. But that's why I try, when I'm speaking, I compare most of my path to Christianity. Because I grew up Christian. I didn't grow up Hindu. And Hinduism already says what I'm trying to tell you. Buddhism already tells you what I'm trying to tell you. Taoism already tells you what I'm trying to tell you. These, these things need almost no explanation. If you're there, you're there. I'm speaking to the ones that are agnostic, atheists, or... Uh, breakaway Christians. Well, I'm Christian, but I'm deeply spiritual. Well, now I'm giving you basis that you can fall back on that book, but y know that there's no need to cherry pick. You should be able to have a mind to discern what was truth in that book and what was put in there by man as its control mechanism of the people. And I, I I, right then, I wanted to apply good and evil to that, but if you apply non-duality, you can see it as, because of the way our culture evolved, a necessary evil to control the people. You can't just have people running amok. On the same token, it was a very bad thing because it destroyed a very good thing that could have put us on a path of evolution even sooner. So, just see it as a thing and have no reaction to it good or bad because <sighs> honestly we really do need to move past that that's why the middle path is so important it can help you see past to get past all of those taste great less filling arguments well it was so and so that said no 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 it was so and so that said well who cares who said what who cares who did what really it's the fact <gasps> Oh, excuse me again. It's the fact that the thing was said or the thing happened. That is what's supposed to be focused on. Well, he jumped over a tree. And see, so you're going to go focus on the man that jumped over the tree. I'm focusing on the fact that, wow, now I know it's possible. Now I, I, I want to know how he did it. I don't care who he is, honestly. I mean, kudos. That's really cool. But how did you do that? Now you've opened that door in my head. You know what I'm saying? And everyone, and think about this. He jumps over the tree. Regardless of how you feel about him, think about the action. You think it would, wow, that, that's really cool. That's a positive. But you're not looking at any of the negative things that will happen. This guy jumps over the tree. He didn't mean for anybody to see it, but somebody saw him, and now everybody knows, and now everybody's hounding him constantly, and nobody leaves him alone. Was that a good thing? Is it still a good thing that he jumped over the tree? Or is able to jump over the tree? Is it still a good thing? And now people are getting hurt because they're trying it. Was it still a good thing? Yeah, but it was still really cool. Yeah, but look what happened because of that. You... Was it still such a good thing? All oh, those gray areas. No, it was just a thing. And we attribute good or bad because we're the ones viewing it. But then again, that can extend to the people getting hurt trying to jump over the tree. It's not good or bad. People get hurt trying things. It's my experience that doing it wrong is, you know, life only hurts when you're doing it wrong. So... Maybe they should go get some pointers. <laughs> Not the point. The point is, them getting hurt, we know what it feels like to be hurt, so we automatically assign bad to it. But 
they could be thinking, wow, okay, I broke my leg, but I learned this and this and this on that try. See, they're not even thinking about the leg. They're thinking, it's possible, I almost got it, and I'm going to next time. You know? So, good or bad is completely the disposition of the person observing whatever action, whatever words, whatever's going on. You you come into a room and someone that you just see someone is angry and just yelling and ripping this person up one side and down the other, and you instantly will feel bad for the person that's getting ripped up one side and down the other. Because you know what it feels like to be ripped up one side and down the other. <clears throat> and your first instinct is going to be to jump to that person's defense. Whether you do or not, you're going to think, someone should say something to that guy. Or someone should stop him. What you're not doing is being a little dis more discerning. You don't know what happened before you walked into that room. That's just what you walked into. You walked into a bad thing, what you presume to be a bad thing. You don't know if that person's a criminal and just got caught, and now they're getting the rules, so to speak. <laughs> you don't know that. And see, if you go in and you view that as a, as a situation instead of a good or bad situation, you might stick around long enough to get the extra details. You can't just walk into the room, hear loud voices, and not give a second to hear what's actually being said and then rush to the defense. You could be rushing to the defense of the wrong person. For all you know, the person that's getting yelled at now is the one that started it. But because you view the yelling in general as a negative, and that's the part you walked into the room on, it's automatically negative. If you walk into the room and you're on the, you, you, you view it in the middle path, or from the middle path, I should say, then all of a sudden, it's neither good nor bad, and you're probably going to take a minute to listen to what's being said, and you can probably extrapolate from there what's going on. Or you can walk up and say, uh, I don't mean to pry, but what's going on? Someone will either tell you it's none of your business, move along, or they'll tell you this is what's going on. And then from there, you're still probably going to want to draw the conclusion of bad situation, good situation. And you can almost see the importance of being emotionally detached in that situation because you're not going to go into the room and fly off the handle because you saw this person yelling. Let's, let's go back all the way back to the beginning of the scenario. You walk in the room, the person is yelling, and you instantly jump to the defense of the person getting yelled at, and you're wrong. In this scenario, you're wrong. You just made a bad situation worse, and that's by your own observation that this was a bad situation, and now you jump to this person's defense, and they're the person that's in the wrong, and now you've made a bad situation worse. Or let's say you walk into the room and somebody's beating somebody up, or it looks like he's about to beat somebody up, and you rush to the aid of the person about to get his ass whipped. You don't know if that person has that coming or not, or why that person wants to fight. Kudos, I do believe it's an honorable thing to stand in the defense of others. But if you don't know the situation, perhaps instead of coming to the aid or defense, ask, hey, what's going on here? That's called going off half-cocked when you just rush into the room and you don't know what's going on, but you rush to somebody's aid and the wrong person gets taken down, arrested, reprimanded, or what have you. Good and bad. It's everywhere. It's in everything. It's on television. It's in the world around you. It's at work. I don't like that person. Why? 
they're a bad person, an evil person, or they're just a person and you're reacting to their presence. Every time you react to a situation, you give up your power to that situation. By get feeding it negative energy or positive energy, you're giving up your power. And see, I'm just talking about negative. Let's talk about positive. You walk into the room, and it appears that this person is being helpful. It appears that this person is being helpful to this person, so you don't pay them any mind. And you walk on past. You may even get a good feeling, oh, that person's being helpful. Right on. And you walk on past. You don't know that this man just kidnapped this girl. It looks like he's being helpful, so you don't even give it a second glance. But to you, it was a good situation. But you don't know. So you walk in, and you don't have to study them like they're criminals, but you know, give it another look. Is, is that person really being helpful? Is that really that person's car? You see someone leaning over the top, or leaning over the door into a convertible, you just assume that that's their car and they're grabbing some stuff out of it, which is exactly what he wants you to think. All you gotta do is draw attention to yourself. Hey, how you doing? And their reaction will tell you everything. Uh, if it's a criminal, nine times out of ten, he's going to start. And because he knows that his start just gave him away, he's going to run. Now, there are more crafty criminals that will be like, Hey, how you doing? And they can talk their way out of anything. But you won't know if you just make the assumption. You'll just think, oh, he's getting in his car. Or how about the opposite of that? That guy's stealing. And I'm not even going to draw attention to myself to see what his reaction. I'm just going to walk up and confront him and make him prove that that's his car and I'm not any type of law enforcement authority or anything. And now you just made, you've created a negative situation based on your perception of a situation, which is where the opinion of good or bad comes from, is your perception. You're perceiving negativity. You're perceiving that this man's stealing. But you didn't take the time to find, you know, observation. You don't even have to talk to the person. Just observe his actions. Do they look fidgety, nervous, or deliberate? And draw attention to yourself. I, I've got, I'm going to say, three to four years of armored car and security work under my belt. And I know for a fact, because I've seen it, I, I've been in situations where I knew the people were stealing and still didn't approach them like I thought they were stealing because I didn't want to scare them off. I wanted them to stick around so I could call the cops on them. So what did I do? Hey, how you guys doing? You guys need help with anything? Lock your keys in your car? I knew they were trying to break in and steal the car. It was an old Riviera. And I know they make excellent lowriders and muscle cars. So, people I've never seen before on a property I patrol every day, I knew what they were up to. Three dudes. I just flipped off the camera, but I didn't mean to. I meant to go three dudes. So, three dudes around this car, and I walked up, big smile on my face. Hey, how you guys doing tonight? You guys need help with anything? Oh, no, we're good. As soon as I walked past them, they took off like a shot. Now imagine if I'd have come running in there guns blazing and that would have been their car. Instead I chose not to react to the situation and instead make sure that that wasn't their car. Because say just because I've never seen them before doesn't mean they're not going to whip out keys and unlock it and drive away. Just because I've never seen them before doesn't mean that they didn't purchase the vehicle and they're just now there to take possession of it. Walking the middle path frees up your reaction. It doesn't necessarily free up your judgment, because we're all going to have an initial impression of something, but it'll free up your reaction. So you can, huh, it looks funny, but let me suspend my action for a minute. It doesn't have to be 
uh, an escalation of hostilities or an ex escalation of any type of negativity whatsoever. Likewise, you can change a tire for someone and not have it be an extremely positive event because, oh, a good deed is its own reward and this person is going to be thankful and it's positive energy and blah, 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 blah. Or you're just changing the tire because somebody needs help changing the tire and what difference does it make if it's you? And people say, well, that's a good deed. Blah, blah, blah. Well, see, the fact that you're getting angry or upset or think that I'm crazy for saying even pull that judgment away from a good deed. Pull it away from a good deed. Because let's face it. What if, and it's not a what if, we know when we shouldn't be doing something. We're under the weather. We're sick. We have a broken bone or an injury of some sort. And because of that good feeling, we'll rush off into the fray and we'll change that tire. And now we feel like crap for the next two weeks because we really shouldn't have done that. But we just had to get that good feeling. No good deed goes unpunished. Goodness is its own reward. <laughs> it's not a bad thing if you don't help. It's not a good thing if you do help. It's a thing. It is a thing. Say it again. It is a thing. Because you don't know. I got that warm feeling. And then later on in the news... And a uh, police say, yeah, we, we would have caught him, but uh, someone helped him change his tire. <laughs> How bad would you feel then? <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> you can't automatically make the assumption good or bad. Hey, you need some help? Why, why is this guy acting fidgety and nervous? Is this even his car? Maybe you just helped him steal a car. Hmm. makes you think doesn't it that's why they say the middle path control your emotions is all that is saying don't apply good or bad and you won't apply a reaction I like to get more information I've changed many a tire for many people I've helped many people fix their car on the side of the road And you know why I do it? Same reason you do it. Good deed! Ha <laughs> ha! But I don't say, I can help instantly. I say, hey, how you doing? Do you need some help? I don't automatically assume that my services are necessary and or wanted. It's not the automatic assumption. Because let's face it, humans are inherently lazy. You won't get off the couch to change the television or even go get yourself a beer, but you'll rush to the aid of this person who needs to, have, needs to change flat tire. Karma padding much? <laughs> if it's obvious to you, it's obvious to the universe. <laughs> you don't want to change the tire. You want that good feeling. You want that good karma. I have no problem doing a good deed, but if I go up to someone and ask them, hey, you need help changing that tire, and they say no, I'm like, I'm good with that too. <laughs> da, 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 straight on down the road. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Another thing I've learned is that duality is the main reason we judge. While we judge everything around us, while we judge the people around us, we judge their looks good or bad, we judge their actions good or bad, we judge the way they dress good or bad, we judge everything as good or bad. And then we're terrified somebody's judging us. Walking the middle path says, You're, you and everyone else and everything else is free to exist. It also says that we're going to use a little more logic and reason. It doesn't mean we're completely removing emotion. Like I said, you seek to still have that empathy and compassion. But on the same token, we don't want to be so passionate that we break into violence at the drop of a hat. It's a middle path. 
even within the middle path. You don't want to be completely devoid of emotion any more than you want to be so emotional that everything that happens turns into a negative because of overflowing passion. <coughs> Excuse me. It's going to be positive or negative no matter what. As long as you hold on to duality and polarity. And everyone is going to lean more to the things that feel good. They're always going to lean towards the things that feel good. You're going to lean towards the more attractive person. You're going to be leaning more towards the well-dressed person. You go to buy a car, you're going to be looking at the mint condition, brand new automobiles before you want to take a look at the used ones. That's just the way we're taught from birth is go for what feels good, go for what feels good. And everything is judged good or bad based on that. I've tried to teach my children that just because it feels good doesn't mean it's the right thing to do and just because it doesn't feel good doesn't mean it's the wrong thing to do. But this hurts. I, I scraped my knee. But you had a lot of fun right up until you scraped your knee and now all you're doing is staring at that scraped knee and now you're not having any fun. But it did teach you something. It taught you to be a little bit more careful while you're out and about. I've got so many cuts and scrapes on me that I only remembered when I had time to think about it. I was having too much fun. <laughs> I was having too much fun to think about the cuts and scrapes. And I'm not telling you not to go out and have fun. And I'm not telling you to go out and do things that feel good. I'm not telling you not to go out and share that good feeling with others. What I'm telling you to do is if the situation isn't your immediate situation and even if it is your immediate situation if you view it from the middle path it'll give you time to assess the situation before you burst into a, a passionate or emotional response to the situation because I've noticed that having the wrong emotional response makes the whole situation devolve into negativity no matter how the situation started it could have been a positive situation from the onset but viewing it wrong or you walk in through the to the middle of the conversation or the end of the conversation or the situation and suddenly everything's negative because you had an emotional response to that and because you didn't have all the information, you had the wrong emotional response to that. And I'm not going to lie. The emotional roller coaster can be a fun ride. But that emotional roller coaster is part of the reason why our species is where it's at now. So when you walk the middle path, you do away with a fair amount of judgment because you're not assigning good or bad. At least it'll give you a chance to assign good or bad based on experience rather than based on a lifetime of people feeding you what they like and what they don't like and you trying to please others. Don't, in that regard, don't be a people pleaser. Don't judge someone as good or bad because other people judge them as good or bad. Judge them as good or bad based on your own experience with that person and if your own experience with that person isn't enough to get you to see things clearly then you are most assuredly not viewing it from the middle path or perhaps you have a bit more empathy and compassion in you than than I'm giving you credit for and that's why you stay with someone that would do you harm emotionally physically mentally because just because you don't view it from good or bad, getting punched is never a good idea. Getting hurt emotionally is never a good idea, especially if the person doing it is doing it on purpose. I mean, a person's hand can fly up and hit you on accident. But if they're hurting you on purpose, you still don't have to assign good or bad. You would know you don't want to be hit. Remove yourself from the position of getting hit. And even emo taking an emotional hit. Or a mental hit. Even viewing it from the middle path, good or bad, I don't want to be hit. 
and maybe not from because of the initial blow, but usually getting hit has ramifications, like injuries. <clears throat> and I don't want to have to function afterwards with injuries because it's not pleasant. Ha <laughs> ha! But say the person is trying to harm me, and my idea of getting out of harm's way is to uh, do more harm to that person than they can do to me. I'm still going to end up harmed, but now two people are harmed instead of just one. Where if you just removed yourself from the situation, neither one of you would be harmed. And wouldn't that be good? Hmm? Or would it not matter? Because some would view that as bad. Well, why didn't you beat him up? It was, wasn't necessary. To avoid harm, I just got away from the person. Okay. But that guy really needs his ass whipped. What if that's what he's after? And you cater to that. You're feeding someone's negativity. That makes it a bad thing. Because what he's going to do is use that as an excuse to go out and create more negativity. So either way you look at it, there's no such thing as a situation being 100% good or 100% bad. You're only viewing the instant gratification of it. It would make me feel better to whoop his ass. And he's probably got it coming because he's done that to a lot of people. I'll give you that. I'm not a pacifist. But on the same token, that could be what he's after. And when you dish him out that negativity, he may think twice about giving it to you next time. But there are going to still be people out there smaller and weaker than him or her, and they're going to go out there and seek those people, and now they've got new fuel for their fire, because they're no longer focused on what originally set them off, now they're focused on so-and-so beat me up, so now I'm going to take it out on so-and-so and so-and-so. So you can never really judge what a good or bad situation is, you, you just you can't, so not assigning it in the first place is best. Even if you decide to beat this person up, you cannot view it as a good or bad thing because you don't know what's going to That person, just because they have it coming, doesn't mean it's going to stop them from continuing that action. For To stop them from continuing, they can, ooh, excuse me, from continuing that action, every person they confront negatively would have to give them the exact same response before they get it in their head. And it would be more of a Pavlovian response that if I mess with these people, they're going to beat me up. And so now they're going to stay away from it. It doesn't end the negativity. It just ends their outward expression of it. Because now they're going to go home and brood in silence and internalize all that. So you've not stopped any amount of negativity. All you've done is use negativity to stop negativity. That's why I'm not in any huge rush to stand up and, and start a revolution like you hear about people talking about. Start revolution. Why, how am I going to get these people out of power by sinking to their level? Isn't that what we're against? Because to be able to fight and win, you would have to sink to their level. Because there are no rules to fighting. And you can bet your sweet ass they're not going to use rules for fighting. And if you use rules for fighting, you've lost before you've begun. Well, there has to be honor. No, you have to win. That's the whole point of war. <laughs> and if you're fighting with honor, you're probably not going to win. Unless you have vast numbers, which we do not. from the middle path. We can achieve victory by not lifting a finger, simply by ceasing to be complicit in the broken system in the first place. If we cease, if we continue to participate, that is like giving implied consent that it's okay for the system to be broken and run the way it's run. You can re rebel and revolt simply by not participating any longer. And even that is neither good nor bad, because each path has its ramifications. Do nothing and let everything continue the way it's going has its ramifications. Do something in the form of physical violent confrontation has its ramifications. 
peacefully withdraw from society in mass will still have its ramifications because we don't know what the response would be but we all agree that we wouldn't like what they do to respond how they respond we're not gonna like it either way we go we know that they're we're not gonna like their response to it because <laughs> Oh, excuse me, it would take quite a bit to get them to think, wow, these people are really serious and aren't just going to back down at a, at a small show of force. You get it? Free yourself in here and in here. And then they're going to have a hell of a hard time chaining you here. Because chaining you here will mean nothing to you. Walk the middle path. And I'm, this is speaking from someone that's at all, not at all a pacifist. But it still troubles me that to get anything accomplished in life, you have to play the game by the rules that are preset or you don't make it. You can't stand up and say, well, I have integrity and honor. Those aren't lucrative at all. You won't make any money doing that. You cannot have a job and be and 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 maintain a level of integrity and honor and honesty. It is almost demanded from you, especially in the workplace, that you be a certain type of person because a certain type of person creates an ego almost involuntarily, and that's the vehicle through which they control you. Just food for thought. The middle path dispels all of that. All of it. So, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Getting on to the 30 minute mark, probably a little bit past it. Uh, yeah, this, I, I think this video requires more than one sitting because there's so much more I want to say about the middle path. But, uh, until next time, you hang in there.